Governor, I want to start with the border. Mm -hmm. You were very critical of the Biden administration for closing the Lukeville port of entry the way they did. So much so that you eventually called the National Guard up to help reopen that port. You were also one of nine governors to sign a letter, I believe just yesterday, mm -hmm. that is asking this administration to get tougher, in, both in terms of border security, but in terms of funding to try to, to bring about an end to this humanitarian crisis. What is the federal government, in your mind, doing wrong on this issue? And how do we get to a place where immigration reform can really be dealt with in a serious way? Um, yeah, that's a great question. Um, and obviously, we need an act of Congress to really fix the ongoing um, issue, the, the steady influx of migrants that we're continuing to see that's leading to this humanitarian crisis that our communities are dealing with. And we're dealing with without a lot of support from the federal government, even though it is a federal issue. So what we've been asking for from day one is more resources for support uh, for, um, for those organizations that are, that are processing those migrants, but also just more resources for security at the border. What happened to the National Guard troops that you called up? Reopen the port? Um, they were not able to directly help reopen the port because they weren't federalized. We had asked the president to issue orders, and he did not. And so they were under state orders. They worked with um, local, and they're continuing to work with local and state law enforcement on uh, drug interdiction and other activities related to border security issues. Let's move to education, an issue that certainly promises to be a prominent one this, this legislative session. The fight over the ESA program and the accountability that you want to see. You have a plan, and I want you to kind of articulate that, that vision that you have. Sure. So it, it is so clear that this program is out of control and unsustainable in terms of the costs, um, not just resources for public education, but all of these other budget priorities that we have. Uh, and um, that was never the intent uh, that that, that that, that people could use taxpayer dollars for these luxury expenses. Uh, it's not doing anything to benefit kids' education. Um, so we need to put some guardrails there. And I think that's a reasonable expectation that it, when, I give, when I've given this address, uh, every audience has applauded loudly at that part of the, of the remarks. So um, it clearly has wide support. Um, reinstituting some of the eligibility requirements that existed before the universal expansion, like 100 days attendance at a public school before switching, um, would save taxpayer dollars, uh, a quarter of a billion dollars. Um, and I think Arizonans deserve and expect this kind of, of transparency and accountability from those who are spending their taxpayer dollars. The Republican leadership, Speaker Toma, President Peterson, has said that anything in terms of reform to the ESA program is dead on arrival. They've said that publicly. Governor, how do you find common ground on this? Well, some of the changes we pushed for last year, like the additional reporting requirements, ha are what led to the numbers we have now that show some of the abuses in this system. And uh, so we have more data at our disposal, and I think that's important. Um, we know that these are costing uh, a lot more money than um, was initially projected, and those are things that we need to, to address. And so. Um, if, if the leadership wants to continue to ignore that, I think they're doing so at their peril and they're um, continuing to uh, jeopardize funding for other priority issues in our state. I want to move to elections and election security, but also security for election workers mm -hmm. and elections officials. Yeah. You were Secretary of State before you took this job. You know all about that mm -hmm. and you know all about how close elections are in this state. Mm -hmm. But noticeably, your state of the state and your state of the report today left elections out, mm -hmm. left democracy out in this presidential year. I wonder why, and what do we need to do to ensure that election workers, election officials, are safe and secure as they do their job? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's a big priority for my administration, which is why we appropriated um, discretionary funds, not general fund, for um, some of these purposes, including election security 
uh, additional training for county uh, elections officials um, uh, through through some ARPA dollars and other discretionary dollars. Um, it's why we convened the bipartisan election task force that came up with a slate of great recommendations that some of them are moving through the legislature as we speak. And I think the most critical issue that we need to address is the potential uh, catastrophe that can happen um, if there's a presidential recount because of the increase or the, the, the lower threshold of a recount. Um, ensuring that Arizona's electoral votes will count uh, and uh, that is being worked on as we speak. The legislature passed in, in 2022 um, the, the, the larger recount threshold. Mm -hmm. So there could be more recounts now. Yes. Um, but that could present a thorny problem when it comes to certification dates, yes. especially in this presidential election. So, Governor, will you be willing to call a special session to get the legislature back if necessary to fix this? And how do you go about doing so so you ensure that every Arizonan's vote counts? Yeah, this is absolutely critical. And we're, um, we're right now in the process of working with legislative leadership and the county election officials on a fix that um, can get the legislative support it needs. Um, and we'll get it done how we need to. If they can pass it in regular session with an emergency clause so it can be enacted immediately or um, through a special session, however we need to do it to get it done in time to address this issue. How concerned are you about it? Uh, I'm, I'm really concerned, uh, and I've made it clear that I want a clean fix. I don't want legislators on either side to attach their pet election issues to it. It needs to be a clean fix so that we can ensure Arizonans' votes count in this presidential election. Former President Trump, it looks increasingly likely that he's going to be the nominee of the GOP this fall. You're the leader of the Democratic Party here in this state. What are your thoughts on his, his candidacy? And is democracy on the ballot this year? Democracy continues to be on the ballot, no matter who the nominee is on either side. Um, and it's something that we can't take for granted and have to continue to shore up our protections for, um, which I will do uh, as governor. Um, and you know, I'm focused on, on leading the state of Arizona, and I'll continue to do that no matter who is in the White House. President Biden, uh, Arizona is going to be such a critical and crucial battleground. He'll be down here, I imagine, a lot. So will Vice President Harris. Will you campaign with the president for his reelection? Uh, I am focused on governing Arizona, and I'll continue to do that. And when uh, things work out for us to work together, um, absolutely. I want to finish with two questions regarding abortion and the uh, fight for the ballot measure, mm -hmm. Arizonans for abortion access, um, collecting signatures right now. You have said that any further restrictions to abortion care, to abortion access won't happen on your watch. Mm -hmm. You have signed, to my knowledge, you have signed that, um, you, 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 you signed that petition. Yep. How vital is it to get that question in front of voters this November to try and enshrine abortion rights and abortion access in the Arizona Constitution? I know that Arizonans are clamoring to have their say in this way, and I'm confident that if it's on the ballot, it will pass. Um, it, it is a critical issue, and I, we're seeing stories both here in Arizona and across the country of how um, not just abortion care, but, but pregnancy care is compromised by these very restrictive laws. And we are right now one bad court decision away from a total ban, uh, and um, it will cost women their lives. Bipartisanship and the opportunity to find common ground and work together. Mm -hmm. You say that we're bound as Arizonans by our love for this state. Mm -hmm. We have more in common than what divides us. But too often our politics right now are, we're, we're too separate. Mm -hmm. we're, we're too divisive. We're too, um, we're, we're unable to somehow get to, to find consensus on a, on a number of issues. As governor this year, with divided government, Republicans holding mm -hmm. small majorities in both the House and the State Senate, what's the best way forward? I think when we can take an issue and get the partisanship out of it and focus on 
solving that issue, like we did last year with the bipartisan budget, like we did with getting Prop 400 on the ballot for Maricopa County, um, we, can, we can work together and get that done. Um, and I think the agenda I laid out on the state of the state uh, is, is a solid um, roadmap of where we can find bipartisan agreement on most of the issues.